Okay. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I welcome you all to our online Sunday service. Um, we had some little issues with the internet, but we are online now and live. I can see we have uh, 10 persons online, 11 now joining us. Um, I would like us to start by um, just praying. Our Father, we thank you this morning for your grace upon our lives. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for sustaining us and our families at this particular time. We bless your holy name for your mighty hands upon our family. We thank you for provision. We thank you for protection. We thank you for peace round about us. We are grateful to you, O oh God, for our country, Nigeria, and the world at this time. Lord, we give you praise and glory. Lord, even as we worship you this morning, even as we share your word, we ask that you bless us. We ask that you open our eyes and open our hearts to receive your word. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, if you have the hymn, if you have this, that is our open heavens. I would like to read, I would like to us to, to you to turn to um, hymn number 15. I'm going to be singing hymn 15, and it's titled, In Christ Alone. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, what fears are stilled when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. Standard two. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in help, lush be fullness of God, the gift on righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to say till on that cross as Jesus died the rod of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ I live there in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day. Up from the grave, he rose again, and as he stands in victory. Since cost has lost his dream on me. Stand the four. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath. Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck 
me from his hand till he returns and calls me home here in the power of Christ I'll stand Amen Once more I would like to welcome us to this um, online broadcast I'll be sharing this morning very briefly on what I titled Our Blessed Hope Our Blessed Hope and I'll be reading two scriptures I'll read Titus chapter 2 verse 13 Titus chapter 2 verse 13 and I'll read 1st John chapter 3 verse 3 in Titus chapter 2 verse 13 the Bible says looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ looking for the blessed hope the blessed hope and glorious appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ in first John chapter 3 verse 3 the Bible says and everyone who has this hope purifies himself just as he is pure and everyone who has this hope purifies himself just as he is pure praise the lord now at a time like this in the history of our nation and the world when there are countless sufferings when the statistics of death keep rising up on a daily basis when the whole world is for the first time in our lifetime under lockdown. I think it is behoves on us as Christians to look at our blessed hope. What's our hope? When believers, when Christians speak of the blessed hope, they look forward to seeing Jesus. Yes, when Christians speak of the blessed hope, they're talking about, we're talking about seeing Jesus. That is to say that having the consciousness that this Jesus Christ will return one day. Amen. Having this hope in us that Jesus Christ is coming. And whatever is happening in the world today, they just point us that the time is is coming near i'm not here to scare you this morning but just to remind you that we have a blessed hope that jesus christ will show up very soon do you have that hope in you do you have that hope in you the hope that you will see him that you will rejoice at his coming and that you'll be ready to receive him that you'll be ready when he comes the bible says in first john chapter 3 verse 3 that and everyone everyone that means you my brother you my sister you parents you teenagers you young people old people aged young professionals you graduates you undergraduates you primary school students you secondary school students whatever your strata is in life the bible says and everyone everyone that has this hope in him you have this hope in him him being christ everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure so while there's a lot of noise a lot of panic out there i want to ask you a very pertinent question do you have this hope in you 
do you have the hope that you will be ready when he comes? Do you have this blessed hope? As Titus puts it in Titus 2 verse 13. Do you have the blessed hope? Why do we hope? Somebody has asked, why? Why hope? Shola, why are you talking about hope at a time like this? Why hope? Of course, the Bible encourages us to have hope in times of despair. But that's not the kind of hope I'm talking about. I'm talking about the blessed hope, our blessed hope, our sealed hope, our sanctified hope. Generally, hope keep, moves us forward. Hope deletes regrets. Hope underlines our, our expectation of the sovereign appearance of Jesus Christ. Yes, that's one thing hope does. Hope moves us forward. Number two, hope energizes the present. Yes, hope energizes the present. It makes life worth living today. Why? Because we have a blessed tomorrow. We have an eternal tomorrow. So hope energizes our today. It energizes our present. So number one, hope moves us forward. Number two, hope energizes our present. Yes. It gives us hope for today because we have a better and brighter tomorrow. Number three, hope increases our faith. Hope increases our faith. Yes, hope increases our faith. Hope makes us, bolsters our faith. Now we see what is happening today. We just say, uh, don't worry, it's going to get better. By and by, for you as a child of God, it can only get better for you. It will only get better for you. Yes, I would like to speak to fear in your life. All those who are afraid, who are despondent, who are, you know, having all kinds, entertaining all kinds of worry. Am I going to even lose my job? What's going to happen? Even when Lagos is locked, whatever is going to happen, I, I want to announce to you by reason of the word of God that your future, your tomorrow is better, will be better than your today. That's what the word of God says. So your tomorrow will be better than today. So number one, hope moves us forward. Number two, hope energizes our present. Number three, hope increases our faith. Hope increases our faith. Number four, hope is infectious. Yes, it's like hope is as, it's more infectious than coronavirus. Yes, <laughs> I, I'll say that again. Hope is more infectious than coronavirus. You know, coronavirus spreads fear and panic. And those, and we have all kinds of people on the internet, on WhatsApp, on Facebook, on Twitter, on all the online platforms spreading fear, spreading panic. You can spread hope. You as a child of God, can spread hope. Don't spread panic. Spread hope. Tell people to cheer up. Tell people that all is going to be well. Tell people that tomorrow is going to be better than today. Tell people that it will be a glorious time after this lockdown. It will be a glorious time for you. Wonderful opportunities will come for you. Why? Hope is infectious. So don't listen to words of fear or messages of fear. Listen to messages of hope. Listen to messages that will bolster your faith within you. And that's why this message is coming your way this morning. There is hope for you. I say, my brother, my sister, there's hope for you. There's hope for me. Yes, why? Because I have Christ in me, the hope of glory. He is the hope of my glory. I have Christ in me. I have Christ in me. I have hope. I have hope. 
why I have Christ in me. It can only get better for me. And it just can only get better for you in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't want to take your time. So hope is infectious. I think I must say this all over again. Spread the message of hope this time. Spread the message of hope. Tell your neighbors, tell your friends, it will get better. For oh, and the finisher of our fate. Number five, hope purifies. Hope purifies. My brother, hope purifies. Hope purifies. In First John chapter 3, verse 3, it says, And everyone that has this hope in him, purifies himself. This is the time to stay away from sin. This is the time to draw closer and nearer to God. Fathers, this is the time to build the family altar. Yes, this is the time to rededicate our families to God. This is the time To allow that fire on the altar to burn. If you have ashes on your altar, if your fire is out, this is the time to put the fire back on the altar. Yes. Because everyone that has this hope purifies himself. Stay away from sin, my brother. Stay away from sin. Stay away from every appearance of sin. Stay away from iniquity. Stay away from transgression. Stay away from everything that is ungodly. Everyone that has this hope in himself, in him, purifies himself, even as he is pure. We are serving the pure God. The Bible says the eyes of God are purer, they cannot behold iniquity. The eyes of God are purer, they cannot behold iniquity. This is time for every one of us. You, everyone, men, women, children, pastors, ministers, whoever you are, whatever you are, this is the time for us to rededicate ourselves to God. This is the time for us to look up unto God. This is time for us to call upon God. This time for us to rally around and pray. Let the family pray. Let the family pray. Let the children pray. Let the men pray. Let the women pray. Let the children pray. Let the youths pray. Let everybody pray. Let everybody seek the face of God. And above all, let everyone stay pure. Because anything can happen anytime from now. The trumpet of God may sound. Are you going to be ready? Or will you be caught unawares? You will not be caught unawares in Jesus' name. And that's why this message is coming to you this morning. Do you have the blessed hope of Christ in you? Are you do you just love coming to church? Where you have no hope of Christ in you? I encourage every one of us this morning. Let's examine ourselves and ask ourselves that pertinent question. Do we have the hope of God in us? Away from the theatrics of church, away from the theatrics of religion, do we really have this blessed hope at a time like this? At a time like this, do you have the blessed hope? Are you ready? Are you ready? I share with you if you watch just one testimony and then we're going to i'm going to try to close see before my mom passed on two years ago i was by her bedside at the hospital a few days before that she held my hands while the nurses were trying to give her an injection she said shola please let me go let me go she said so with a smile on her face she said, I'm ready. I am ready to go. I'm ready to meet my maker. 
She said, she said, please let me go. I thought she was joking. She was saying it with a smile on her face. She said, look, take me home. I don't want to stay in the hospital. Take me home. With the benefit of hindsight, I asked myself, Mama was ready. Mama was smiling. She was sick. She was in pains. She was sick. She was in pains. Her kidneys were having issues. But she was still smiling and saying, Shola, please, let me go. I'm ready to meet my maker. You know why Mama said so? Because she has a blessed hope of meeting Jesus Christ. That when she closed her eyes in death, she will open her eyes in resurrection. And she will see Christ face to face. Face to face. Will you see Christ when you close your eyes in death? Where will you be? Where will you spend eternity? Ask yourself that question. I'm sure you've heard this a thousand times, but ask yourself again. Are you ready, my brother? Are you ready, my sister? I'll close with this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19. The scripture says, If in this life, only we have hope in Christ. We are of all men most miserable. If in this life only we have hope, there are people who have hope only in this life. You know why? They have a good car. They have a good job. They have a steady source of income or sources of income. Yes. They have a good house or houses. They have children. They can afford to pay the, school, the, the fees of their children, where even if it's 5 million, 10 million. Yeah, they are not afraid. You know, they're not afraid. Why people are panicking. They don't have money. They don't have this. They are like, I'm comfortable in life. They are, they are, those things are good. Don't get me wrong. If you can afford all the necessities of life, you know, you can enjoy the, you know, all of this, they are good. But if it is only in this world that you can have that kind of hope, that scripture is for you. First Corinthians 15 verse 19. It says, if in this life only you have hope in Christ, then we are of all men most miserable. You know what that means? It says, we are of all men most miserable. If in this life only we have hope. Let your hope alone not be in this life. Yet your life, your hope not be only in this life. You can afford the necessities of life. You can reach out. You can travel to any part of the world you want to today. Ah, that's good. That's some people's dream. But I mean, that's you're, you're comfortable. Look, a man's life, a man's life, this is Jesus. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things that he possesses. A man's life does not consist. In other words, our life, as Jesus said it, is more than our necessities. They are bigger, far stronger, far weightier issues of life. And the weightiest of them all, the weightiest of them all is our blessed hope. Do you have this hope in you? Take time to reflect on this message today. Read again Titus 2 verse 13. Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Read again, 1 John 3, verse 3. And everyone that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. If you are here and you do not have this hope in you, there's good news for you because there's still time. I'd like you to close your eyes and say after me, Jesus, you are my hope. Without you, I am nothing and I have nothing. Today, I surrender to you and I anchor on you. Save my soul, bless my life and help me to be ready at your glorious appearance. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, my dear brothers and sisters. I encourage you to read the scriptures again. Titus 2.13, 1 John 3.3, 3, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 19. God bless you. Until I come your way again, keep looking unto Jesus and anchor unto our blessed hope. God bless you. This is Burashola signing out. Bye-bye.